Hi, everybody. Welcome. We are very excited for you to be joining us today. My name is Jackie. I'm Susan. And um, we are coming live from our homes into yours. And so thank you so much. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're very excited for you to be joining us today. Um, we are coming live from our homes to yours. And thank you for welcoming us, everybody. My name is Jackie. And I'm Susan. And we are coming uh, live and we wanna say thank you again for everybody who are joining us today. And we're gonna start in just a second. Um, now I know that a lot of you are using that comment section um, and I'm thankful that you are able to talk with us. We are gonna ask you to use that comment section re uh, related to the things that we are talking about today. Um, whether it's uh, your ideas based on things that we might ask you uh, to think about or maybe um, choosing some items today. So go ahead and use that chat box um, for the things that we're gonna be talking about right now. And so, like I said, we are coming live from our homes to yours and we are very excited uh, to get started. Now, some of you might be familiar with the California Academy of Sciences, but for those who aren't, maybe this is the first time you've ever heard of us, we are a museum within San Francisco. And I wanna show you exactly where that is by looking at our planet as a whole, because it is a very special place. We can actually zoom in to the location where we're at or where our museum is at. We come into San Francisco, into Golden Gate Park, and you can actually see the outside of our museum. Oh, and there's our beautiful museum. So at the California Academy of Sciences, our mission is to explore, explain, and sustain life on Earth. Actually, you could think that maybe every day is Earth Day at the California Academy. We do our very best, right, Jackie? <laughs> we do. We our do. Best. <laughs> we do our best to make sure all living things have a great place to live on planet Earth, whether we're humans, animals, plants, butterflies, fungus, you name it. And we actually have uh, not only people come visit our museum, but we actually have people who work here that explore not only what's around us nearby, but also further away. We call them scientists. Yeah, here are some of our co-workers. They travel all around the world to explore different aspects of nature. They find a problem, they do their very best to also find solutions. Now, as we mentioned, we live on a, an incredible planet that have lots of different types of animals, mm -hmm. ecosystems, <laughs> habitats that help sustain everything here on our planet, gives us everything we need to survive, and also gives everything that those plants and animals need to survive as well. So because we live on this amazing planet, um, we need to kind of think about how we can make sure that this planet stays uh, around for a very, very long time and gives everything um, equal share of the resources that we have. And one resource that we have is actually food. So we're gonna think about that a little bit today and look at um, our impact on our planet Earth that way. And the way we're gonna do this is, let's actually think about what we're gonna eat. So what I'm gonna ask you all to do is think about a meal. Maybe it's breakfast, maybe it's lunch. We're at lunchtime here on the West Coast or maybe it's even uh, dinner coming up for those who are on the East Coast. Think of that meal, and I'd like you to choose three items you would like to make a meal out of based on these images right here of the foods. Looks like we have some steak, some a piece of pork, chicken, beans, cheese, egg, noodles, rice, potatoes, um, maybe some peanuts, bread, some spinach. All right, I hope you have your three meals. Susan, what's your meal today? Well, it's getting close to lunchtime and I didn't eat before this program. 
So I have a meal planned of a roast beef sandwich. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your three items would be beef um, and some bread. bread. And some, I think I wanted to put some of that spinach on there as well. Okay, sounds like a great meal, uh, a roast beef sandwich. Yum. All right, so now that we've kind of thought about what kind of meal we want to make, I want you to think about where do you think that food comes from? How might that affect other plants and animals? So kind of just think to yourself, maybe you've never thought about that and that's okay. But today we're gonna think about things a little bit differently. We're gonna be looking about how our food choices affect Earth's ecosystem. In fact, that's gonna be our focus question today. And the way we're gonna do this is we are going to look at our food choices how that might affect Earth. And then at the end of our time together, we're actually going to be making a action plan to see if we can change some of our actions to make sure that we have enough resources on our planet Earth, because we actually have a lot of resources. In fact, if you look at our whole planet Earth, there's a lot of things going on here. We see water, we see land, and we might need to use some of that to make our food. For example, let's look at land. I'm curious, how much land do you think we use to make our food? Either grow the animals um, or raise the animals, what we call pastures, or maybe grow the, uh, the grains and the vegetables that we eat and animals eat too. Well, we could actually map this on our planet Earth. And everywhere you see color is where we grow our food or the food that we grow for other animals that we eat. It's pretty amazing that we use a lot of one resource, land, to make our food. We also have another resource we use on our planet Earth to make so, our food. Yeah, Jackie, when I look at this map, I see a heck of a lot of water, right? There is a lot of blue on planet Earth. A lot of, I guess that's a lot of ocean. Mm -hmm. So it seems like we do have a lot of water on Earth. But I know I've seen um, some charts <laughs> that show Actually, we do have a lot of water, but it's mostly salty, right? Because it's all that ocean water. So 97% yeah. is salty. And look at that little, little segment up at the top, that green area. That's all there is for fresh water. And that's what we humans use. And we also share with every single living thing on Earth. Yeah, you're right. We only have a little bit of fresh water that we use and also that's available for um, different uh, animals and plants on our planet Earth as well. So how do humans use that fresh water? I know we drink it. Yes. Use it. Yeah. Definitely. We drink water. Let's think about that. Um, maybe drinking water. Um, we might also use it maybe to clean things, um, even ourselves. Um, and there's many different uh, ways. So if we took all of the water that we, all that fresh water we use on Earth, and we kind of put it into one chart, that drinking water would probably be uh, added up to about 7% of the fresh water we use as humans. Um, but most of it is used for what we call agriculture, being able to raise the animals that um, we eat or be able to grow the crops um, and the vegetables and the grains um, that we need to eat as well as other animals need to eat. So with us knowing that a lot of our fresh water goes to making food, I'm curious, how much water do you eat? Now I know that might sound like a funny question, but that's what I'm asking. How much water do you eat? So we can actually look back at those food items that we chose 
or um, for those who are just joining us, you can choose three items to make a meal. Let's think about that. Each one of these food items uses some amount of water to either grow the vegetable or raise that animal. So Susan, are you curious how much water you ate with your roast beef sandwich? Yeah, how much is a how much water does a roast beef sandwich use? All right. Well, let's go ahead and reveal how much water each one of these items uses. Oh dear. <laughs> that beef, that's amazing, Jackie. It's 346 gallons for one serving of beef. Yep. Mm, that's a that's lot. That's right. <laughs> So I also notice that it's sort of a, there's an interesting pattern I see here. So it looks like all of those animal products in the top row, the beef and that pork and that chicken, they all use a lot more water than say the plant products on the bottom row. It's interesting. Yeah, that's a great observation. Um, so our, uh, our animal products are kind of using more water than our uh, vegetable products, which is kind of interesting because when I first looked at this, I didn't. I thought maybe vegetables would use the most water. Did you think that too, Susan? I did, and but now that I'm thinking of it, I guess it's because the animals they drink their own water, of course, but then they also eat those vegetables for food, and that food took water to grow, so it's like two layers. Yeah, exactly. So we can actually dive into this a little bit deeper by using one example like an egg. So an egg used 49 gallons of water to make one egg. That seems like a lot of water. Um, but let's think about how is water used in creating one egg? Well, we have to wash that egg. So that's going to use some water. And like you said earlier, Susan, we have to also uh, give water to the animal to be able to drink and grow up, just like we need water to survive, so do animals. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to drink the water and it might stop, start off as a small little chick and then grow up to be a um, adult chicken. And you know, it's gonna use that water throughout its life. But also something that you mentioned, we also have to feed that chicken. And feeding that chicken means we have to use water to grow the grains it's going to eat. So our chicken also eats water, just like we do. And so this is what we call hidden water. Water that we don't directly drink, but is used in making the food that um, the chickens eat. Um, and also in the food that we eat as well. So that's why we see that animal products use a lot more water, um, fresh water, than some of our vegetable products. So again, remember one egg is going to use 49 gallons of water. Now to remember, anybody remember that milk jug, that gallon, that's 49 of those. That's a lot of water. And remember, we only have a little bit of fresh water on our planet Earth. So I want you to think about how can you lower the amount of water that you eat? So here's your challenge. I'm gonna go ahead and place up on the screen one more time those food items. Um, and the number um, of gallons that they use. Your challenge is to choose a new meal that you still like to eat, still seems yummy, but is using less water to make that food item. All right, are you ready for your challenge, Susan? I am. All right, and I think everybody else is ready too. So let's go ahead, take a few moments, and go ahead and pick what are some new food items 
you still like to eat to make a new meal? Remember, pick three. All right. I have mine, Jackie. You ready to share out, Susan? I am. So I I do like to eat meat, I have to admit. Um, but I like chicken pretty much just as much as beef, really. I don't really care that much. And so for lunch today, after this program, I'm going to have a chicken sandwich. And I see the chicken is way less water than the beef, right? 97 gallons versus 346. That's a big drop. Yeah, that is a big drop. So you're switching out beef for chicken to yep. help. All right, that's a great idea. Um, and I'm actually looking at some of the comments that are coming in and it looks like um, a lot of um, our friends are also saying they're maybe switching to veggies. So maybe one day a week you go vegetarian. So that might be a great option to be able to uh, change and lower the amount of water that you eat. And then maybe um, if you just eat chicken, maybe one day a week you just uh, eat beans instead of beef as well. That's a great source of protein. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Thank you everybody for using that uh, comment section uh, for things that are appropriate to today's program. So thank you very much. So one other thing that we can also think about on uh, Earth Day is how we can extend the food we have at home. And so to do this, we are going to play what we call extend your food game. And this game is going to be where we are going to put up some ideas or some food items. And we're gonna think about how can we extend this food? How can we use it maybe in a different way? All right, I think we're ready to play. So our first food item is we have leftover meat. And we're gonna give you some ideas of what you could do with it. And you can also let us know what are some other things you can think of. Um, to do something differently with that food. So our choices are, you could throw it away because you'll never be able to eat it all. Put the meat in the freezer and use it another time. Share leftovers with other people or leave all the meat in your refrigerator. All right, so choose the option that best fits your life. What are some things that you could do? All right, Susan, do you have your idea? Yeah, I have my idea. All so right. I'm thinking I would put the meat in the freezer and use it another time. That would be the most convenient for me. That's a great idea. And also sharing leftovers with other people is a good idea as well. Now I know it's a little bit more difficult in the time that we are in right now, um, but we could share leftovers with our neighbors um, who are right next door, if you know your neighbors really well. Another thing you could do is you could leave it in the refrigerator, but we have to be careful because it doesn't last as long in the refrigerator than it does in the freezer. Now, we definitely don't wanna try to throw it away because that's still good food that we could eat. And if we throw it away, remember, we're throwing away all those resources we use to make that food. So let's think differently about our food. All right, I have another one. You find rubbery carrots in the fridge. What are we gonna do with it? Are we gonna chop them up and cook them in a stew? put them in water to revive them, throw them all away, or give them to your uh, pet rabbit. So I got this one, Jackie. Okay. 
So I would um, certainly not throw them all away because then I'm throwing away not only the carrots, but all the water that it took to grow those carrots. And I don't have a pet rabbit, so I wouldn't give it to a rabbit. My sister has a rabbit, but she's down the street and she's sheltering in place. So it's not that good a time to give it to a rabbit. So I think it's one and two, either one of those. Yeah, those are great options. So using rubbery carrots to chop them and put them in a stew is a great idea. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now. I have the stew going in the kitchen right now and I had some rubbery carrots and we were able to put them in there and they'll be great for um, the stew for dinner tonight. Um, and then also a really cool trick with carrots is just because they're rubbery doesn't mean they've gone bad. It just means they've lost some of their moisture, their water. And that's what kind of makes them kind of flimsy or rubbery. So what you could do is put them in a glass of water. They need to sit in there for a little bit of time and they'll start to get a little bit hard. They won't get really, really hard like they were when they were fresh, um, but it'll maybe be hard enough that you could eat them raw or we could use them in a different way. Now, like you said, Susan, giving them to our, um, if you happen to have a pet rabbit, that's great. Mm -hmm. And maybe your neighbor does too. You need to ask permission to sh uh, share food with other people's animals. But also we need to make sure and remember that um, certain foods might not actually be good for animals. So we need to be careful on that. And again, definitely don't want to throw them away. So I'm curious, I would love to hear on some of the ways that other people are um, sharing or extending their food at home. We've all started to become really creative. So you can go ahead and use that comment section and let us know, how are you extending the food at home? And remember, we do want to be uh, appropriate to where we uh, this uh, time we're in. So I am going to ask you to uh, let us know uh, with that chat box uh, things that are relating to today. When you're ready, Jackie, I can share something. All right. <laughs> I got an idea. <laughs> okay, well, I want to see, we have had some uh, good ideas coming in the chat box. Um, so, for example, um, one uh, person has, their mom is actually gardening more, so they're growing their own food. Oh, that's, um, that's a really cool idea. Uh, somebody also said freezing leftovers. All right, what's your idea, Susan? Well, yeah, I don't really, in these times, I, I never really like to go grocery shopping, to be fair, but I really don't like going now. <laughs> and so what I do is when I'm almost think I've used up everything in my refrigerator, I look one more time mm -hmm. and you know, I find lots of bits of things that we didn't quite finish, I guess small amounts of leftovers. And I combine them and make a, make a dinner, even you know, there may be their food that you wouldn't normally combine, but it's creative and sometimes it tastes really good. Yeah, that's a great idea. So kind of going through putting little things together. Um, sounds like some of um, our audience is doing that as well. Um, so great. You know, not only are um, individual people uh, thinking about how they are extending their food, there's also companies out there as well. Um, and a lot of companies all over the country are, and the world are thinking about this because what they normally do has been disrupted um, by these shelter in places. And so one example of a company here in San Francisco is uh, Water to Table. And they're a fish company that usually only sells to restaurants. And unfortunately, restaurants aren't, a lot of them aren't open. So they had to be creative. They had to think differently of how can they sell the fish that they are catching and still be able to sell them to people. So what they came up with is they are now selling to individual homes and even delivering. So 
it's important for all of us right now to be really creative in how we are using our food, how we are making our food, to make sure that none of it gets wasted. So we've come up with some great ideas of how we can minimize our food impact. And here are just a couple of them that we have mentioned today, like uh, eat chicken or beans instead of beef to reduce the amount of water that we eat. Maybe eat no meat one day a week. Um, also something that I've been having fun with is searching and creating recipes with the food that I actually have. We can meal plan with the shopping list. Uh, we can also eat leftovers like Susan, you said earlier. Um, and also going through our fridge to see what needs to be used or even frozen. So your challenge today is to create a Planet Hero action plan. And I want you all to think about what is one of these actions, or maybe you thought of one yourself, that you could do in your life that might be a little bit different than you do on your, uh, in your day-to-day -day life? What is one action that's new that you could still do and want to challenge yourself to reduce your food impact? And what I'd like you to do is we are going to create an action hero plan. So in your comment section, we are gonna be placing these actions as well as something to help you complete these actions for 30 days. And part of creating an action hero plan is to remember how to do this action. So it's important to remind ourselves, because this is something new, something we're not used to doing. So we need to remember how to do this. So I'm curious, Susan, what's gonna be your new action to help you minimize your food impact? So I think I wanna go back to that eating chicken instead of beef. And I am going to be sure I only eat beef one time every two weeks. Mm -hmm. All right. And how are you going to remember to do this? So I was thinking, I have two ideas. One, I would put a photo on my refrigerator of a bird at a freshwater lake. And that would remind me not to eat too much water because that's good for the birds. Wow. <laughs> and, and my other idea was I would, at my next family Zoom meeting, I tell my mom and my sisters about my plan and I know them, they are going to hold me to it. They'll remind me. Awesome, so that's a great idea. Um, and then also something else we uh, wanna think about is how are we going to celebrate that we completed this action? This is something new and something hard um, to rem uh, remember. So how are you going to go ahead uh, and celebrate that you've completed this action maybe in 30 days? Well, I was thinking that um, going along with that idea of putting photos on my refrigerator, every week that I go by and I do not eat beef, I'm going to put another photo on my refrigerator. And I hope that by the end of, say, two months, I'll have a beautiful collage of nature in my kitchen. Mm, great. Awesome uh, ideas. Yeah. And we can also um, have... Uh, I see some ideas of um, also putting, uh, giving yourself maybe a treat, like maybe ice cream um, as a, 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 a way to celebrate. That's awesome. So we have some great ideas for exploring our planet Earth um, and becoming planet heroes through our own choices of food. And I wanna say thank you to everybody for exploring with us today um, and thinking a little bit differently. I know this is something you might not have thought about before, um, but it's important to think about um, these ideas. And so maybe the next time that you go to the refrigerator or the next time you have a family meal, you can also share these ideas just like Susan said and pass on being a planet hero to everyone around you as well. So I know we had a couple of um, questions that kind of came up in the chat box. 
And I wanted to go ahead and um, kind of go over those a little bit. And one person was asking about being vegan. Um, since we noticed that some of those um, food items that used a lot of water are those animal products. And if you're vegan, then um, you know, you're not eating those animal products at all. And that's great. Um, maybe think about how you extend your food instead and, and focus on that uh, food aspect. Now, if being vegan is uh, a great option for your lifestyle, that's awesome. But for some of us, it might not be, like Susan and myself. <laughs> um, but just being aware of what you're eating and how much impact that has, um, that is an important thing to think about. Oh, we had another question that came on in asking, why was Earth Day invented? Susan, you want to take this one over? <laughs> um, well, I think it's basically we want to protect everything living on Earth, right? And um, it's it started, I think today, this is the 50th anniversary, I believe. Or it's yep. yeah, yeah, very exciting. Yeah, 50 years ago, Earth Day was invented um, because people started to notice also that our Earth was starting to get really dirty. Um, we didn't have clean air um, like we do today. Um, and uh, our waters weren't clean either. So we wanted to do something about it. So people stood up and decided that we should have Earth Day. All right, and another question that um, I have seen come through uh, was asking, um, why is Earth Day important? Susan, do you have any uh, I, um, opinions on that? Yes, well, we really want to protect the animals and um, all natural systems on Earth. And so this is a way for us to remember on one particular day how we can do that. Of course, we want to extend it through the year as well. And that's kind of where we came up with uh, make our name for this program of Make Earth Day Every Day. So we want to make sure that we have, um, we think about it in our daily lives. All right. And I know another question that kind of came through um, talking about um, what happens if you actually do have to throw away food because it has gone bad. Um, and so one thing, uh, the big thing you should try to do if your area does this is throw it in the compost. Um, so that way we can reuse those nutrients um, and be able to uh, keep uh, that out of the landfill or create your own compost um, in your own backyard. So then we can also be able to uh, use that those nutrients ourselves, like for gardening. And so we want to try to avoid throwing things away um, as another, much as possible. Another thing to consider is um, sometimes we think food might be bad and it really isn't. It might just be discolored. Like, you know, if a banana starts looking brown, maybe you can chop it up and put it into pancakes. <laughs> So um, thinking about, you know, what is bad, what has gone bad and what has not. Awesome. Well, yeah, some really great ideas. Again, we want to encourage everybody to kind of think a little bit differently um, about their food. How can we reuse these foods? Um, maybe in a different way, like in pancakes or maybe bread. All right. Well, we want to say again, thank you, everybody, for joining us today and remind you that you all can be planet heroes every day. So just kind of look uh, around you and notice uh, what you're using for your food and maybe think about how is that impacting um, planet Earth. So thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye.